Hey guys, Pat here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm on another phase of refinishing or setting up this pool table. Uh, purchased this pool table here a week or so ago and I've been nibbling at it a little bit at a time. We're getting ready to put the felt on. Uh, actually, this is going to be cloth, it's not felt. So I want to make sure that any wax residue, any little pieces of wax are taken up along the seams or if, if there's any wax that had been dripped on to the table while sealing the seams, any little tiny piece of dirt or piece of sand on there is really going to amplify how your, your uh, play is going to be on the table. What I'm doing is I'm just going through with a final sweep on this. I'm just taking and I'm brushing this off really well making sure that there's no foreign objects, no, no dust, no nothing on the table. Going through with my scraper, I got a little scraper here. If there's a high spot, like a little piece of uh, wax that I got left on the table, I'm making sure that's all off of there. Okay, quick note on fabrics. There are two different types of fabrics. There's the felt, and then there's a, a worst wool, W-R-S-T, and that's a little bit misleading because that's actually a better, <laughs> it's not worse, it's better than the, uh, the felt that you can buy for pool tables. Um, the, the basic difference between the two is this one's just probably a, a little bit thicker and so it's got a little nap to it. It's uh, hairy, if you will. If you can imagine felt, it uh, actually has the, the wool that actually stands up in there a little bit. Whereas this particular fabric here, again, this is a worst fab, call it called worst wool, worst fabric. So you'll notice the difference in texture between the top and the bottom. This is the bottom side. This goes on the slate. And this is the type, this is the side here that will actually be exposed. And that's the surface that you actually play on and makes contact with the balls. This side here is a little more fuzzy. This side here is a little more smooth. And the difference between that fabric and this felt you can see the difference in the characteristics of, of, of this versus what I just showed you. So the difference between the two when you're playing is the worst fabric will have a faster play. What that means is the ball will roll faster, will roll longer, and it makes for a more what they call a faster play. So I went ahead and went with this. It's a little more expensive, like twice as much. And, but this is supposed to be basically a tournament grade type fabric. So I went ahead and splurged and went for it. You know, I've got the table broke down and assembled. I might as well just go ahead and spend just a little bit more. And it's, it's more of an investment than anything else. So anyway, um, that's, that's it for fabrics as far as what I know. You guys want to add something in the comments you're more than welcome to again i've never done this before i've done some research on this and um just with the normal things that i do around here i feel pretty confident that this is going to come out and be uh professional quality at least that's the plan anyway so there's a, a few ways a guy can surface a table and one is to start by putting in a piece of felt around here and hearing it with some spray adhesive here I've got some Super 77 by 3M and apparently a lot of guys use this for adhering uh, fabric or felt to the inside of pockets. And the reason to adhere fabric in here, this is a high wear point right here. And so by doubling up on the fabric, it, it kind of cushions this a little bit more when the ball actually enters the pocket and bounces in here it's going to want to over time wear out the fabric maybe on this corner right here or this radius or right inside of the slate 
I have enough fabric here to do a nine foot table, but I only have an eight foot table. That gives me a little extra fabric just in case I need need extra fabric for um, a corner I might mess up or, or something along those lines. Okay, on the inside of my pocket, I'm gonna le at least need two inches, two inches wide by how long this is. So I can just take, take my fabric and run it along here to see how long I need. You know, just cut off a little extra. I can always cut it off when I get done. So th this right here will be to the for the two side pockets. And if I just cut it right directly in half, I'll have a lot extra to line those pockets. They give you plenty of fabric, it looks like. Okay, I've, I've cut out a couple of templates here for the corner pockets and the side pockets. They're shaped just a little bit differently. Now, a lot of installers, from what I understand, they just go through and they hold a bag or something like that underneath here, and they just they just go ahead and paint or just go ahead and put the spray in here. But I wanted to go a step further and keep from getting glue on the uh, surface of the slate. So I just got some uh, quarter inch furniture grade plywood I had laying around the shop and traced underneath the plywood itself. I just took a piece of plywood, laid it on top of here and traced underneath it with a pencil and then came out with this shape here. So I went ahead and cut that out on the bandsaw. Um, again, this I don't think it's a critical thing because the people I've seen do this uh, they, they just, you know, they just hold a bag or something over top of it and they don't worry about the, the spray. But I'm going to go ahead and take it a step farther, hopefully to give, give you guys some ideas. But uh, to me, I don't really want to have any spray anywhere other than the inside of this radius right here. Shake can well before using it doesn't tell me how long so here we go. I'm going to glue that just underneath the radius there. The stuff works great. Okay, I'll go ahead and finish out the rest of the pockets and get back with you in here in a few minutes. Okay, our next mission here is to lay out the fabric or lay out the cloth. Again, they have a specific side, an up and down side. And it looks like they give you plenty of extra scraps here for doing pocket corners. So I didn't need that small, I didn't need to cut that small piece up. like this and now we're just going to sweep the table off just going to go like this so if there's any dust any dust on the slate we're going to remove by doing that and then we'll go out to the outside and we'll drop this side and we'll just shake it like that we'll inspect the back side for any strings or anything that lift or anything like that attached to it okay I 
I always put it on there square. So now that I got my claw hole square and got plenty of overhang, I could have probably got by real easy with a eight foot cloth. Obviously, because it's designed for an eight foot table, but I just want to make sure that I had plenty of cloth, and they gave me plenty of cloth for the uh, the rails and everything. So I think we're in good shape. So I'm just going to put a couple of staples in the end here. I'll go to the other end. Now I'm going to put tension on it and I'm going to make it pull it tight. And as I'm keeping tension on it, I'll put a couple of staples on this end. Now with this corner secure, I'm going to go ahead and finish out all the way across to this corner pocket and st stretch this a little bit across here. And I can just take this, just barely take the slack out of here and nail it all the way across the end here. Just, just barely taking the slack off this corner. I'm going about every two inches on the back side, two on the end, two on the end, and about every two inches in the center. Actually, every one inch is in the center. Now I'm going to go back with a hammer and make sure that all of the staples are flush against the slate. So I'm pulling this way and I'm also pulling from that other corner pocket. A little bit of tension here. Actually, quite a bit of tension. Now I'm going to go to my center pocket, or my side pocket, and I'm going to pull this down, pull the slack out of it, where I have a little bit of material here to work with. Then I'm going to go to the opposite side and pull directly pull directly across the table like this from the opposite side pocket and pull all the slack out of that I can putting quite a bit of tension on it then I'll put a holding staple right here so now this is tight across here and now I'm going to go from corner to corner and, and pull, the, pull any of the slack out from the corners now we got the ends, they're tight and I want to go to this other corner here and pull any slack out of the table on that corner. Any of the slack that you pull out, you want to pull towards the pockets so you have material to work with on the pocket itself. I don't want to distort any of the fabric coming this way because that side over there isn't fastened down yet. So I'm just going to just take a light, uh, some slack out of this and just put a staple right here. Opposite that staple I just put in. Go to this corner pocket, pull them this way. The end result is you want this thing tight, and so I don't want to distort the, the fabric as it's coming this way. I'm going to try to get it as straight as possible from one side to the other, and then on the other side, um, I'll pull against it and I'll pull all the, all the uh, slack out of it. Pull towards, towards the pocket and away from the finished side over there. Make it nice and tight.
Okay, now I'm going to go come in here and start tightening up the tightening up the pocket areas. So I have this holding staple in the middle, and there are going to be three different slits that I put in in the in the fabric, and all of these slits are going to stop below where the fabric wraps underneath the pocket. So guys, I've been struggling with these pockets a little bit, so I had the camera turned off a little bit so I can focus. <laughs> but um, I think I might have pulled this just a little bit too tight. And some of the videos and some of the different information I've come across, um, they're, they, they like to pull the fabric this way and that way to give a little more slack to the pocket. I've tried to follow that rule. But um, apparently I didn't do it enough, so it's a kind of a touchy-feely thing <laughs> in order to figure out just how much. And the, and the worst cloth um, actually isn't as flexible as the felt. The felt has a little bit more elasticity to it. So I'm fighting with that a little bit. I'm putting some holding uh, staples in here. And... I know you're supposed to remove these after you get done with the project. I'm not sure if I want to do that or not because this is so tight in here that um, it's really hard. It's it's hard to get the fabric underneath here, and you have to you have to tear pretty close to the staples in order to make this whole thing work. So the important thing is is to have a nice smooth tight top, and I have that going on. So as you can see here, I don't have any, any wrinkles in the corner, but when I slip this down the sides here, it's a little bit of a mess, and I'm not really particularly happy about it, but maybe that's just the way it's supposed to be. Um, the other thing, when you get, get to a point, you can just run your uh, ut good sharp utility knife across here as you're going around, and just cut the excess material off of the bottom of this uh, off of the bottom of your uh, slate here. Just come here to the corner, tear that off, give yourself enough material here to where you can fasten it to the bottom of the slate. Then you have to put relief cuts in here. But there's just, there's just not enough stretch there for me to make that work. So uh, what I found is that you need to start at the center and work out. And then I remember I got the bottom piece down here. I've got a relief fit as well. So yeah, if any of you guys got any, any ideas on how to do that better, um, I'm open to suggestions in the event that... Uh, other people get in here and want to know how to do it then they'll have a whole bunch of different ideas and I know that's not going to be a very pretty inside pocket but I'm going to leave that just for the extra extra security and not having that come out I can always take those out later if I if I choose to but I think that just gives me a little more holding power on that on that pocket. Not really, not really tickled about that. But this installation is not going to affect the ball, uh, any, any of the play at all. Um, I am happy how tight this turned out. I did tighten it pretty good. So, um, matter of fact, I think I might have tightened it too much. But it looks really nice. It's nice and flat. There's no puckers in it, and that's what I was looking for. The next thing that I do is going to be to uh, work on the rails, so that'll be on the next video. Appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for watching. Take care, and God bless.